Welcome back to A Little Faith. I'm here with Simon Dean, who's one of the newest directors uh, at WCF. How are you doing, Simon? I'm doing very well. It's really good to be with you, Levi. Yeah, nice. So thanks for taking the time to chat with me. Um, this is a getting to know a directors episode. So we've done a couple of these uh, just to introduce you to people who listen to the podcast or other you know supporters of WCF. Um, so I think what I actually want to do, I want to start with uh, what drew you to WCF, and then we'll go into kind of some of your biography or life story. So we're kind of starting with why. Um, well, I guess, when did you first hear WCF and what uh, what drew you into volunteering? I guess I guess it all started with the pandemic. Um, and I think that's probably true for a lot of folk outside of North America. WCF lands in their consciousness with Hymns for Sunday and various other aspects of WCF act- activity. But Mark asked me to do a faith chat during the pandemic. So that was my first exposure to the the sort of focus and output of WCF, but I, I think I, I think there are sort of moments. Uh, uh, it's a grand word, epiphany, but moments of realization when I realized WCF was doing really good work and I wanted to be involved. I think the first thing was just just exposure to the website. It's modern. It's engaging. Um, it's so different to what I'd seen elsewhere in the Christadelphian world. There's a kind of a a lightness of touch. I think the, the the websites that in the Brotherhood can often be a little dry and sort of earnest. And I thought the output, uh, the language that's used, I mean, the, the faith talks that are in the the TED style, I thought that was yeah. that was really effective. So that was uh, that. Those were the the sort of you know moments where I thought this is this is something I want to be involved with, and then. There's OCBS, which I could talk about as well, which again extended my appreciation of of the the, the WCF um, activities. Yeah, and you were involved in that, right? So the first online Bible school was the summer of 2020. That's right. I um I gave I gave one of the sessions reading Jonah backwards um, at uh, uh, the first Bible school, and again that was a moment when I thought, wow, because I was watching the countdown clock in absolute terror prior to my first session as the the countdown clock went down and then <laughs> but i was surrounded with this professionalism this support the the people on slack telling me um how it was all gonna and, and i thought there is a I don't know what the right thing, way to describe it. There's a, there's a kind of a bench strength here, mm. capabilities, professionalism that I, I really hadn't come across before. And, I, and so, and again, it, my my exposure to WCF um, with with the first Bible school was 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 again a really positive one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that, the first Bible school was such a hit. I think it was really uh, that was I think a big win. Because uh, I, I started volunteering uh, with WCF in late 2018, um, so I had all of 2019, and then when the pandemic hits, and we were we were so well equipped. We've we've a, a, a bunch of us have said it. Uh, the team at the time was really well equipped to kind of spring into action. I think we provided a lot of great uh, resources to people, including the Bible school. That was uh, and that was an incredible work because we probably I wasn't even I actually wasn't on kind of the group that did that. But they pulled that together in you know a couple of months, and I think it, the product was the actual event was fantastic. I totally agree, and I think the second Bible school looked at the first Bible school and said, "We have created something here, but we need to increase its reach." And yeah. the global focus of the second Bible school was was you know it was it was breathtaking to think that you know we you know in in the um, uh, in the mountaintop cafes, we were touching the various time, sc- time zones. I thought yeah. that was really, really powerful. And one of the things I was, one of the next things that I was involved with was was being on the committee for b- the second Bible school. And I helped organize some of the language, the foreign language classes. So the, the Farsi cl- classes, the Swahili classes, and the the Telugu classes, which uh, which is the language which is spoken um, in in India, and that sense that I I don't know I don't know what you think about this, but leave that, that that sense that WCF was able to reach out across the globe in a way that perhaps 
no other Christadelphian organization could. Yeah, and WCF, I think, is unique in the community as far as an organization, uh, as because we don't have a specific regional commission. Um, a lot of the a lot of the Christadelphian organizations do have kind of very specific geographical targets, um, but yeah, the last last couple of years, WCF has been able to because you know been able to to pull a lot of people together through the Bible School, but it also is because we have so much international funding sent out as well. Like some of our some of our most successful kind of missions are are in India or Cambodia or the Philippines, um, who were all, all involved in the Bible school. Yeah. So yeah. when was it that, when uh, was it that you formally came on as a director? Um, last year, in the, the fall of 2022, that international reach, I think was solidified and established beyond question with the hymns for Sunday. Mm-hmm. You, you have, you have no idea what it's like here in the UK with with up and down the country during the pandemic, pandemic, and even now, ecclesias are ben- benefiting from that great work that Alethea uh, and her team does. And I'm I'm president on Sunday, and I'm no, I'll be using WSCF hymns with Farsi subtitles because we've had 26 baptisms in um, in a few months, and this is an absolute lifesaver, and. In terms of the international reach, one of my abiding recent memories is we, we go out to Croatia to visit uh, the three brothers and sisters in that country of, I don't know, nearly four million people. And I remember sitting with a brother and sister um, and their house is still bears the shell marks and the bullet marks wow. of the Balkan Wars in the 1990s. And and they are too poor to to repair it. And sitting in their very modest kitchen and streaming, WCF, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And the broad grins of Danko, brother Danko and sister Jelka. Wow. It, it's kind of priceless. And I thought, as a director of WCF, I I thought. This is what it's all about. Really mm. powerful. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And what's your um, what's your specific mission, or what what's under your purview? I guess as a director. Well, um, I'm exploring that, Levi. I think it's. Uh, I'll be honest with you. It's very very clear. It's the Make Faith Matter program, part of the 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 Cultivate Faith Together mission, and. The, the idea that we're working on at the moment is to produce a series of videos that provide fresh content that we don't routinely see in our community. And, and we, we want to kind of address two things. The first is, the, is, is I guess, a negative. Uh, come on to the positive uh, in, a, in a bit. But we've, we've identified what we call faith traps or faith deficits, things which take us away from leading a rich life of faith. Paul, Paul Elliott, in a recent article, um, he talked about some of these. So, for example, you know, you might defend your faith in Christ, but do, in, do it in a non-Christ-like fashion. Or right. you, could, you could think that you could earn credit with God with a greater balance of good deeds rather than, 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 than bad deeds or bad works. Or, you know, yearning for the future kingdom to the to the detriment of of living a rich full life now so that's that's one part of what we want to address and then the positive side of that is we want to capture in these videos the sheer joy of a life of faith god wants us in his kingdom we would i was talking to mark just recently about the parable of the talents you know that guy that 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 buries his talent thinks his master wants to catch him out, and we can sometimes think that mm-hmm. the God we worship wants to catch us out. But he's not just looking for a correct belief system; he's looking for a whole life lived in his presence. And these are the kinds of ideas that we want to try and capture in in that. So that's that's one of the primary focuses of of my responsibility at the moment. Just finish off, it's tough. We have worked on so many scripts and binned so many scripts. It's, it's really, really interesting how tough it is to get this, this fresh content that, we're, that we've set ourselves. So uh, as I think I said 
on another occasion, we, we need fresh content, we need engaging content, we need inspiring content, we need content to get uh, get these 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 moving. But we're 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 making progress. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely an interesting mission. Kind of um, it's something WCF has been doing. You know, for a while we do it kind of through the podcast too, just trying to amplify certain messages, um, and maybe and maybe give you know specific answers to certain certain questions or um, or things that could. Uh, that could distract people. What are some hopes you have for the future for for those videos? What's the best case that you see in how that how that hits and how that works out? Well, I guess there's the the internal and the external. First, the internal. I think it would be good if we could, through this process, create a team of people who can gather content, uh, deliver high quality content. Obviously, we're working with. Paul's team with Mike Bromley to produce these videos, right. to produce in-house expertise. But obviously then externally in terms of the deliverance to – there's a phrase that I uh, I think is – it sort of sort of uh, captures a little bit what we're trying to, to do. It's, a, it's, it's putting a stone in someone's shoe. You can carry on walking. You know, it's not debilitated you, but – it's caused you to think about something. You've created an itch in someone to think, yeah, is that is that describing an aspect of my life in Christ, which I need to, to reconsider? Is there something that is richer, more satisfying? Um, so that's that's how I would see, you know, if, if we could land that and and get you know, get the the uh, conversation going as a result of these videos. I think we would have, um, you know, we 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 would, we would have been successful. Hmm. Let's talk more about you. I guess so what, uh, this is a it's a funny question, but I guess you know, walk us through your Christadelphian career. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when uh, when and where were you baptized? So I was baptized in Watford um, in 1978. Um, I'm a baby boomer. Mm -hmm. uh, I hail from Watford in England. Watford is known for nothing other than that Elton John was born there, and he he once owned the local soccer team. Um, my parents were Christadelphians, but I think my greatest one of my greatest blessings as a Christadelphian. Your older listeners might remember that Watford was the ecclesia of Harry, brother Harry Tennant. Oh wow! Okay. And I think it's difficult to put into words the spiritual benefit that I gained from seeing a fine Christian mind at work. Sure, I learned tons about the scripture, but what I thought Brother Harry did for all those who were in his orbit was he he showed how to think, this is not a word really, I guess, but he showed us how to think Christianly, mm. to work through challenging hot salty um topics with grace and kindness and empathy and so so you know my 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 christadelphian career i would say had a wonderful beginning in terms of my my life at watford and and it wasn't just brother harry there were plenty of other wise brothers and sisters um during my uh young young formative years mm. yeah I have, I have a i have a wonderful memory of him uh when i was eight or nine actually so it was near the end of his life i guess he came to california and did a series of talks that that struck me as a child as i you know they were engaging and and encouraging and uh yeah that would be a that'd be a wonderful kind of role model to have around yeah yeah so my my work life took me has taken me to Switzerland. It's I, I spent three years on the east coast in Connecticut. I was a member of Meriden Ecclesia, so got to know the brothers and sisters there. Really, really wonderful time. And more and more recently, I spent a couple of years in India, where I got to know the brothers and sisters there, particularly in Hyderabad. So, so you, you were uh, taken you were taken to India by work. That was that's oh. right. I uh, went there with work. Wow. What years was that? I left the day of the ban the pandemic started and it kind of started for real in March 2020. So it was the two years prior mm. to March 2020. That's pretty recent. 
Yeah. And what ecclesia do you go to now? Is it still Watford? No, I am in Ware, which Watford is in the county of Hertfordshire. Ware is also in the county of Hertfordshire, so I haven't moved far. Um, Ware is blessed with, uh, as I said earlier, quite a number of recent baptisms of our Farsi-speaking brothers and sisters. So mm. we uh, are rejoicing with the challenge of integrating folk whose English is limited, whose background could not be more different than ours, and possibly the most relevant issue, I think, or the, 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 the most challenging issue is that they are all in some ways suffering from the results of, of trauma and anxiety as part of their uh, troubled journey from Iran to the UK. Mm. How many, how many um, Iranian members are there? Well, b- before, we, before they ar- arrived, our ecclesia numbered about 36 but it was the sort of an ecclesia where there are quite a few elderly and others who who don't or won't attend. So you can right. you know, approximate down from that. We've had twenty six Iranian baptisms. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole yeah. other discussion. That's a fascinating ecclesial uh, um, chemistry. Yeah, it is, and. And it's a great it's a great problem to have, and and I use the term problem advisedly because it it it, it presents all sorts of challenges. Those older members who think uh, I want the ecclesia back that I once knew, where everything is not translated into Farsi. You can right. imagine, yep. you yep. can imagine the challenges. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I can imagine. There's a. Uh... Lots of cultural, you know, just things that are that are cultural and not scriptural that would be that would be legitimate and hard to deal with, hard to work out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, if someone's listening to this and they might feel like they have some time to give, or what's a what's a volunteer that you would love to hear from? Oh, <laughs> I would love to hear from someone who would like to grapple with the challenge of taking a. Um, a concept, a, a a message, and then crafting some engaging, ultimately scripts. We need scripts for videos. So, so, so folk who ha- who can combine an ability to craft words and in- integrate images, in- integrate um, video in their thinking. But they're not required to do the video. Someone else will do that. Someone else will find the the components but taking an idea taking a a concept and and creating a short seven to eight minute video script we right. that's what we need and we would love people to uh to put their hands up to do that and i'll repeat you're not looking for uh, someone to make the video or be in the video um, but you're just looking for really strong ideas and kind of um you know pr- pr- production help with making that absolutely, the- absolutely. Conceptually, if you think, I mean, I don't know how a film is made, really, but I hear, I talk about them, I hear talk about the writer's room, and that's, that's effectively what we want. Someone in the, in the writer's room by themselves, getting an idea, discussing the idea, um, and, and then coming up with, with, with the script. That, that stage in the production process. Mm. Yeah, this is, you know, a total aside, but the, um, Hollywood is having, or they're, they're having a writer's strike right now, um, yeah. which is a big deal actually for me in, in here in LA. It's something that, you know, you, you, you hear constantly about, you can, you can see some effects of it, but yeah, I think that is, it is a really interesting part of the creative process that a lot of people don't respect. You know what I think is actually interesting is we kind of do have a writer's room for the podcasts. So there's three of us that put our heads together to, ahead of every podcast and we we call it our production meeting, where we but it's nothing's done besides just talking about what's the goal and how do we want to accomplish that, what kind of questions would I ask, or something like that. And it's a yeah. I've tried to host podcasts without that step, and it's much much harder. It's really interesting. It's like you need you, you need that back and forth when you're when you're doing something creative. Absolutely, so we need to uh, join forces. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you for so much of your time. You can be reached. I guess your email address is sdean at wcfoundation.org. 
That's correct. Um, just thought I wanted to reach out to you and uh, thank you for the time you gave to WCF and um, uh, looking forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you, Levi. I've really enjoyed it.